Animating clothing is simple if we focus on the forces interacting with our subject and take the time to understand the key poses of a waving motion. This is Sebastian here from the Noble Frugal Studio. Today we're gonna to learn how to animate believable clothing. Be sure to leave me a like and let's get started. You guys know I always use the Torbox Elite while I animate, but it's pretty pricey. So here comes the Torbox Lite. Most of the same features at a way lower price, under $100. This is the cheapest entryway to Torbox's extensive driver software, the unsung hero of these editing consoles. Since I don't have as many dials on the Torbox Lite, I'm gonna use the Tor menu feature to group together my necessary functions instead. I usually use one dial for brush size and another for flipping frames while I'm animating. So with the Torbox Lite and the software, I can use one dial to do both. So this is still new to me. Let's see how the Torbox Lite holds up throughout the video. Thanks to Torbox Tech for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. The chain principle helps us to understand follow through, but to simulate it over and over again, it's pretty slow. A faster way to do this is to memorize the extremes of a waving motion. I'm gonna teach you the extremes of two distinct types of waves that'll help us animate believable clothing. Just wanna let you know that a wave is basically two opposing S curves at its most basic form. So those are kind of like our keyframes, but let's break this down and discover all the poses of a wave. So there are four parts of a wave. And now, like we talked about, it's just a transition between two opposite S curves. So the first pose of a wave would be your first S curve. We'll start with this one and do this with me. S curve. It's important that these uh, ends of the S are not bending downwards like this or coming upwards like that. These will actually be parallel to each other, these ends of the S's, okay? So these are parallel like that. The next main pose, I like to call the up pose because most of the wave will be arcing upwards. Okay, next main pose is the C. So right after the up pose, we have a C where, where our wave forms a perfect even arc on both sides. After that, we have the down pose. This is much like animating a walk cycle. So now most of the wave is going to be sloping downwards like that. And then we come back to our S curve, except for the opposite S curve. And it restarts itself in the opposite direction. So now we got our up pose just in the opposite direction. So upside down, up pose. Then we got our C and then our down pose. That takes us back to our starting position. Okay, if you play that, those are the basic keyframes of a wave. The other in-between should be pretty intuitive. This basic pattern will help us understand how waves work in general so we can animate them from imagination. So that's a perpetual wave. We'll call that kind of like a sine wave. Now there's one other type of wave that's going to help us animate believable clothing. And that is a whipping motion or a, a flapping motion. Now, basically a whip or a flap is a wave with a tension point. So basically one point is not moving and then the next point's moving a little bit and the point after that's moving a lot and then the point at the end is moving the most. So how do we animate a wave with a tension point? What are the key poses? I actually won't simulate this one, I'll just show you. So we're gonna start first key pose, we're gonna draw our C in whatever direction you'd like to start. And then our next pose, after the C we have sort of like our down pose, I call it the straight because it's when the wave is actually most straight, so something like this. Because remember the top is gonna be still moving fast, but this bottom's getting ready to change direction. After that will come our S curve. It seems like it should be at a diagonal because um, this tension point is not moving. All right, so we have our C, then we have our straight, then we have our S curve after the S curve comes. Next we have our up. This is sort of like the most exaggerated pose. Spin most of the way and our other C will be right here. So you can make that up as close to this other uh, starting point as you'd like. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. Looks like this. Yep, looks pretty good so far. Now, next pose is guess what? It's going to be our next C. So what comes next? You tell me. Very good, It's that's the straight. Then what comes next? Of course, the S curve. 
where the wave starts to change direction. And then after that, we have our up pose that pulls it back to the original C. Let's see how that looks. Set the loop marker here. So these are your two types of waves that will help you animate believable clothing. I'm actually going to give you guys a bonus wave. And this one I'll call uh, a jump. It's just a singular wave. If wind blows the clothes for just a short time and they just make uh, one sort of flapping motion, I'll show you how the clothes can get back to a resting point. So we'll start at a resting point like, like so. A straight line, as straight as, straight as I can get it. Okay. And the wave is gonna start by just, just one side. Now that's where the force will be coming from. Force taking it, uh, pushing this way. It starts by picking up this first part of the wave. And then next we get this S, that's where we can get our S curve, okay? S curve. And after that, of course, we have our up pose, then our C pose, down pose. Make sure the tail of the down pose is over the C pose. So we want there. Back to our opposite S. Around here and then our last lastly will be right here just with this other end lifted up see how this is the same as what we started with so they start starts with this just lifting up a little bit then it ends with the same thing okay then we have flat so that is that my friends is a jump you see how that differs from a wave knowing and memorizing these keyframes and extremes will make it very easy to animate things like clothing, hair, actually almost anything. Let's see some examples. So in this example, we have two potential opportunities to implement um, our knowledge of waves. And the first one would be adding, uh, obviously, an ear to our character model here. Uh, he looks a little bit weird with that one. So why don't we start by adding the flapping motion of the ear and then we'll move on to also giving our character uh, a hoodie as well. I want to flip this starting with the ear. All right, using our whip knowledge we see sort of like a C curve right there. So let's take our whip so we can start here with the straight pose going right up. I want to keep in mind the direction our character is going so since our character is moving up we know his here it's going to fall downwards. Now that I have this gesture down, I'm just going to go ahead and draw in the ear for each frame. All right, so I'm gonna color this in. Now I have a few colors I'd like to use. I have this pink color for our character's skin right here, number four. Then I also have this deeper pink for some more variation in the skin that I'd also like to use. So I'm actually gonna set up some shortcuts on the tour box to select my colors. I'm gonna create a tour menu that is activated by the tour button right here. So click not set, tour menu, plus color. Edit, I'm gonna hit plus. I'm just gonna hit one on the keyboard. Hit one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'll name this tour menu colors. And these will automatically correspond to the colors in OpenTunes. So I'll hit OK, hit OK again, then I'll minimize this. Now when I hit the tour button, I have my colors. I can use this scroll wheel, to select my colors, and then hit the tall button to select them. And as you can see, it automatically updates in OpenTunes. Now remember, in OpenTunes, color number one is actually technically this zero entry, which is a transparent color. So in order to get to color number four, hit my tour button, scroll down, and I'll hit five. There we go, I'm gonna hit the brush tool and I'll start painting in my colors. At this point, we don't really need the keyboard anymore since we just created a number pad with the tour menu feature. All right, the ear is now colored. Lastly, let's add a hoodie to our character. So let's draw the gesture of the hoodie movement. Right red line so we can see it. Our regular C pose. And there we go. This is what I ended up with. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something in this video and found it helpful. Special thanks to Torbox for sponsoring this video and sending over your Torbox light. 
I didn't expect this level of quality at the price point. If you guys would like to see a full review of the Torbox Light, let me know in the comments below. While you're there, you can check out torboxtech.com in the description to learn more about the Torbox Light for artists on a budget and the Torbox Elite for creative professionals. Both consoles use the same software, making them very easy to adapt to. Thank you to Owen Art and Roberto Martinez on Patreon, as well as all of my patrons for your loyal support. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.